Good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. It is Friday. Praise the Lord for bringing us through another work week. And today we are going to wrap up this topic, or so I think. We're still in the same Psalms 150, and we're going to look at the final verse, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It was repeated with exuberance. It started with the command, praise the Lord, and it is ending with the command, praise the Lord. We cannot want it any plainer or any better than that. We are commanded and called to praise God. And praise is a weapon. I mentioned earlier that even when things are not going well, that we're still supposed to praise God. Praise is a weapon. When you read the Old Testament, you will see scenarios and in history whereby they had to, Israel in most cases, had to go up against an enemy and God would command them to send the praises before them. They would blow the trumpet and they would praise God before. And then the warriors who would fight would come behind. And in some cases, they didn't even have to fight. The praises took care of it. And then Jericho wall came down with a shout and it was a shout of praise to Almighty God. Praise is a powerful weapon. And when we give praise to God, God fights on our behalf. We should use this weapon not just as a defensive weapon. When problems come, all of a sudden you start praising God. But as an offensive weapon, whereby you're on the offense, meaning you're praising God every day. It's a practice. You get up on morning. Thank you, God, for a new day. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping me through the night and breathing breath into my body. You constantly praise him. You constantly raise your voice before him and you praise him. And when you do that, you're operating on the offense because problems will come. And when those problems come, your weapon is already charged. Your weapon is already sharpened. Your weapon is already aimed that it would destroy and deplete the weapons of the enemy that will be coming against you. It may be in your workplace. It may be in your very home. It may be in your very bed. But whatever it is, that praise has to be on the offense. It has to be consistent and constant. Don't wait for a problem to come and then praise God. Of course, praise God in a problem. But don't wait for the problem to come to praise God. Praise God anyhow. Praise God now. He has given breath. And it says, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Do you have breath? The dead cannot praise God. But we who have breath, we can praise God. I'll share a short testimony with you that I just remembered. I remember one time I was driving going to work and I have a habit sometimes I'm in traffic and traffic doesn't bother me because it's more time to praise God actually I just remember another testimony anyway so I'm driving in traffic and I saw this um this gentleman he so we were in, stuck in traffic he's next to me and I'm there in my car and I have my music going and I'm just praising God and I'm dancing having a good old time early in the morning and the gentleman, he looked at me and he greeted me and I guess he was, I was like, hi. He was very surprised at how exuberant I was. Anyhow, I go into my business and a couple of days after this young lady came, it was a new customer and a gentleman came with her. And when I came out, it was the same gentleman that was in the car next to me. And he was like, oh, it was you. She, he went home and told his husband about this woman who was having a good old time. They were stuck in traffic and she was dancing and stuff in the car. And guess what he was doing? He was fretting and complaining. But when he saw my dancing and stuff, it caused him to smile. Because all I saw, I didn't see his fretting and complaining. I saw that he was looking at me and smiling. Well, he was a Christian as well, but he was busy complaining. And he said in that moment, he learned something. And the other thing that I benefited to, I had a customer for a very long time. And she knew my personality even before she met me. She even knew about me before she came into the salon because her husband went home and told her, I saw this lady and she was in traffic just like me and I was complaining, but she was dancing. And he didn't know at the time that I was praising God, but by the time he shared the story, I said, well, I was praising God. Another testimony I said there were two, bear with me, with regards to having your praise on for the offense. 
um, to be on the offense, sorry, praising even before trouble come. I'm accustomed to praising God in the car and so on. And one day I'm praising God and I'm shouting out, Jesus, you're good. And I'm just praising praises. And out of nowhere, a car came from a side street right in front of me and I was descending a hill. I do not know how we did not hit. But what I do know, I was busy. I was already in praise mode. And all I can show is Jesus. And that car went by. I was able to press my brakes. It was like, we did not touch. It was, I do not, well, I do know. I do know. Praise is a weapon. And when we are praising God, we are in, literally sitting. Imagine praises in the heaven and the angels are praising. We are literally transported into that praise where God is and he cocoons us. Uh, and it's saying where his presence is, there's the fullness of joy. There, there's freedom. So live in the presence of God. Live in the praises of God and watch what God will and can do for you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, successful weekend and praise the Lord.